Hello everybody and welcome back to the shop. My name is Eric Leahy and welcome. I hope you guys are cozy and warm. Maybe you guys got something cozy and warm to drink like tea or coffee. And this is the second part to the leather stitched handle. This is really exciting. I can't wait to get into it. I'm not going to talk a whole lot in the very beginning, but welcome. So we're going to get right into it and you guys will see that it's stitched together quite a bit. Not just the handle, but the actual video itself. But I'm going to explain some stuff along the way. Fair warning. I'm not a leather worker, I'm still learning a lot of things, so if you know lots about leather, go in the comments, let me know some stuff to improve on, or things that I might need to make my leather stitching better. Anyway, thank you guys, and let's check it out. So here it is, there we go. we're starting off by cutting up the material that I actually messed up. I cut off, I cut up way too much material, and by that I mean I grabbed thick material, which this is, and I grabbed thin material. It's my mistake, I thought I was grabbing more thinner material because I thought I only had thin material. So I ended up um, making four pieces when I actually really only needed two. So you guys will see that near the end where I just have two pieces. And my thought was based off the first leather stitch handle that I made, the handle was too thin and I didn't like it. And I thought, okay, this needs to be thicker. So I thought about you know, doubling it up, two pieces on either side. Of course, I end up grabbing thick stuff that's like eighth of an inch thick, and I grabbed really thin stuff that I was gonna double up, and I was like, oh, well, why do I have this thick stuff? Why don't I just double this up? Like, why don't I just have one of each? There, I'm just using an awl to punch the holes. You might be wondering why I use an awl when I've seen other leather workers like hammer the toothy punch through. Um, Nat was sleeping in the other room, and it's like, three in the morning when I'm doing this, so I'm not making a bunch of noise. I use a bunch of brass nails to align the holes in the knife handle, so stitching, just making sure that everything would fit just fine. I'm using a, I think it's called Cordovian leather dye, it's kind of like a bluey purpley kind of color. I put it on super thick, making sure that it's all good and moist. Um, so it looks quite nice. It'll age better actually, like over time as it starts to fade, with the color, it actually looks so much better. In that metal container, I actually have a mixture of beeswax and olive oil. I just use the olive oil to make it more like a paste and thin out the beeswax. That you can see there. I used a tool as well to put a groove around all the holes so that the stitching sits really nicely flush with the level with the uh, leather and doesn't feel raised at all. And I'm doing kind of a back and forth. I think it's called a saddle stitch. I think. And it goes back and forth where the leather crosses over the same hole on the inside. Back and forth, back and forth, you can see it all stitched up. And it is super tight of a feel. It feels fantastic. And so it's uh, artificial sinew, so I can just melt it and smooth it out with a lighter. And uh, you can see there that I'm slowly trimming out a small portion around my trademark. I ended up just taking out that whole finger swell area and just cutting it straight off because there's no point in it even being there. And I'm using a file and my knife that I made there for leather working um, to just shave off all the extra, extra leather. And I'm using more of that mixture that I made of beeswax and olive oil to now burnish, which it works amazingly well for burnishing. I really like it. And it glides so smooth. The handle feels so good, it's like soft but also tight. I'm kind of showing off there where I punch the brass um, nails through just to hold it and keep everything realigned. I'm showing off the little sawhorse there and the two needles. Didn't really need to do that, but I did it anyway. And there it is with just the cutoff because I, I don't need that. I don't need that extra little bit there, it's kind of flappy. And we're going to pause it for a hot second. Um. I'm actually gonna go back a little bit. Sorry guys. Yeah, we're gonna go there. So you can actually see it's a little bit grimy, it's a little bit dirty. Next time, I would spend a lot more time cleaning that, buffing it, finishing it, sanding it, doing all that stuff around the outside of the actual blade so it doesn't look all grindy and dirty. Some people might like that, some people might want it more clean. I think the safer option, if I'm opening this up to the public, it's more of a cleaned up, finished, sanded, smooth metal. I don't care if it's polished, as long as it is clean looking. So that is 
the leather stitched handle, it actually ended up being quite thick and it actually felt really good in the hand. I really like the squishy, soft leather texture feeling, but it also, since it's a thicker leather, it's like, it's eighth of an inch thick leather. Veg tan, regular veg tan that you can buy off of Amazon for like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, Canadian. Um, and they give you a big roll of it. Like, it's a lot of veg tan leather. And you can almost... The nice thing about the leather, and one of the things that I almost really want to do is when I start teaching courses, if I get into doing knife-making courses, one of the things I really want to do is this style of handle because it's quiet work. After you've done the forging, you can kind of sit down and just work away at the handle and... It's something that is unique that a lot of other people won't have. Because lots of people that do knife handles, it's just wood. They teach you the course, they put a wood handle on it. But this is different. Not only that, but it also gives some lead way for some mistakes in the tang. That if it's a little bit warped or it's slightly sanded too much on one side or whatever. The nice thing about the leather is it kind of swells to a certain extent and it will fill those gaps a little bit and make your piece look a little more finished even if you have some mistakes and that is really good for beginners you can still talk about the mistakes you can still talk about the stuff and address the stuff but in the end the knife still looks just as good no matter what and people who pick that that pick up that knife from their friend or whatever go oh wow like you wouldn't even know because of all this stuff because the leather swells so that's something that's super interesting. You guys will also see some knives. I'll pause it again in a second. You'll see more knives that I'm also planning about doing in the future. So we're going to carry that on. And um, yeah. So checking that out. You can see the back side. That is another knife that I want to talk about. This is a prototype that I've also made that I really, really, really like. I'm trying to pause it here at a good time so you guys can see this. It has a mixture of, I think, three different colors. It has like a grassy green, it has a coffee kind of purple, and it has a goldy bronze hue mixed and swirled together. Now, I've done this type of handle before where I've punched a hole, forged and stretched it out, and formed a handle from it. And I think that shows a little more skill and attention to detail, especially if I spend more time finalizing the handle and making it look more like a handle versus this one where I've kind of just punched it out and chiseled it out. Um, it looks a little bit more it, it takes a lot more attention to detail than just forging out a really long tang and bending it around like the stereotypical blacksmith knife um, that you'd commonly see it's smooth because it's all connected it's one piece but it's been forged out and stretched out and I think that shows a little more attention to detail when you can do something like that so, and plus it's a little bit more unique. This also opens up the opportunity for a lot of customization. Same with the leather stitch handle. If you want a different color of leather dye, I can do that. If you want a different color of thread, of um, artificial sinew mixed with a certain color of leather, you can have that. And the thickness, I can double up the leather if you want it thicker. I can um, shave down the leather or sand it down if you want it thinner. I can do a lot of things with the leather and the dyeing and the customization and you can probably do it on any kind of handle for any kind of blade shape you want it's completely easy to do and match it not only that but it's easy for me to buy the stuff get a hold of these things and it's all around just a good feel it's awesome now this handle is something that I would love to do for like a kitchen knife so maybe that's the next thing I make is this kind of and I want to open a video for this soon and upload a video for it because this is super cool I really like this style this is something that I could definitely do and the customization is huge on this any kind of mica that you want to add to this any kind of metallic mica of any color of any variety you want you can have in this knife handle so you, if you have a favorite color or multiple colors that you want mixed I can do that I can swirl it make it match it and it is so iridescent and beautiful and it shines in such a beautiful way and yeah it's incredible i love it i would spend a lot of time just working on it but it would be so worth the time to make it look incredible
So I think the next video that I want to upload of the shop actually won't be on the boar sword handle. It'll probably be on this before the boar sword. But I am still working on the boar sword. Don't worry, that's not out of the realm of things. It is still in the works, but there's a lot of things I want to work on. This is something that I can open up to the community to sell. And so I'm going to focus on this first and open this up, make a video, post it, all that stuff. And yeah, I think this is incredible. We're gonna finish up the video here. I got one more thing I wanna talk about anyway. Well, maybe a couple more things. So there's the style, super beautiful. That's got three different colors in it. You can kind of see it swirling and all that stuff. Cedar balls, here we are. Cedar balls. I had the random thought while walking through the dollar store of what if we mix the the resin kind of iridescent beautiful shine with just a little accent of wood not too much wood just enough wood to add something different and so I walked into the dollar store just getting some things and came across these cedar balls and I went perfect it's a little accent of wood cedar is a beautiful wood this is kind of like a ready cedar this is really nice and you know what? This would be a nice accent, especially polished and finished. That would be gorgeous. So, pick them up. 24 pieces, that's 24 knives essentially, unless I want to put two in, in one knife handle. Like one in the front, one in the back, or whatever. I thought about right in the swell of that handle, right in the middle, putting one in there and then having it radiate with the rest of the resin out to the tip of the blade and out to the, the back end. Another one you see there is the other resin casting knife. The first one I did before I did the full metal knife handle. This was a really old puku that I made early on in my blacksmithing experience. Early, early on, I had a leather handle and it was not very well made. It still got a little bit of gapping up around where the blade meets the bolster there, but it's such a huge improvement with the actual resin cast. That also has a mixture of multiple different resins, just kind of swirled together to see what would happen. It was the precursor to this full metal knife that I can't wait to go forward with. So the idea of customizability, huge, love it, can't wait to carry it on and see what beautiful things I can make with it. The cedar balls would be an awesome accent to kind of add into a knife handle here and there a little bit, just to spice things up, add a little bit of wood to some of these other things. So we're gonna carry on with a little more of the video here. You can see some more of the knives there, just checking those things out. Those cedar balls are only about four bucks, so it'd be a nice thing to kind of add. And that is the entire video. So we're just gonna pause it there. And yeah, so that's the leather stitch sandal. I'm not a, I'm not a leather worker. I don't know leather that well. But I'm learning, I'm evolving, I'm becoming better, and with every knife that I do that's in this style, I can improve upon. There's also the idea of mixing the resin and the leather, which I've thought about of casting a leather handle, or sorry, casting a, not leather handle, casting a um, resin handle, thank you, a resin handle, then drilling through the, le the resin and adding the leather on top of that. So you have this band, instead of steel, you have a band of this metallic, shiny, resin, mica, iridescent shine around the border, but then you have this nice, subtle, soft leather stitch on the top side. I think would be a really cool mix. To have something like that would be super cool. Um, so I might play with that in the near future might not and that full leather sorry the puku that i made a long time ago i might add as like a one-off kind of sellable thing there are some things that are off with it there's a little bit of bubbling in the resin where i messed up on that there is a little bit of gapping in the from the blade transitioning into the bolster and then into the handle there's a little bit of gapping there but all in all, it's a solid O1 tool steel blade, which is a very qual very good quality tool steel. And the handle's extremely comfortable. It's not too big of a knife, it's not too small. I might open it up to be a one-off that you can buy. And 
I hope to see people's interest in the near future. If you have ideas for something you think that would be beneficial or something that might be better, you know, put it in the comments down below. Let me know what you think, what you didn't like. And as always, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. Go in the comments section and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. It always helps out me. It always helps out the channel. It always helps out me understand what you guys are liking, what you guys aren't liking. It helps me. It helps me a lot. And I can't wait to start making more shop videos. I think it's going to be something that you guys would be more interested in than the actual gaming stuff. Because the gaming stuff is just filler. I have to keep uploading things to keep my my videos in the algorithm to help more people see my videos. So to get there, I kind of have to keep uploading. And gaming videos are really fun. They're easy for me to do. I can sit down, play a game, record it, and just enjoy myself and upload it. So if you see breaks and then gaming videos, it means I'm very busy and I'm kind of working on videos here and there for blacksmithing videos. It takes a lot of time to piece these things together and edit it. I am just me, so I have to film everything and I have to take it home and I have to edit it, blah, blah, blah. It takes a lot of time and it'd be really easy if I had an editor, but I, I really don't. And I also work full time on an afternoon shift right now. So coming home, like right now, it's basically three in the morning and I am still talking. So yeah, anyway, you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope you guys stay cozy.